Another day, another story. A new study suggests that humans, not vermin, spread the Black Death, and that the disease may not have been bubonic plague after all. After 10 years of poring over documents and archaeological evidence attesting to the Black Death's devastation of London in the late 1340s, Barney Sloan smelled a rat. Or rather, he failed to catch a whiff of the flea-infested rodent armies most scholars have charged with spreading the fatal disease. Welcome to Thibault Eminent Channel. In a book published in 2011, Sloan paints a revised picture of England's most populous city in the throes of the terrifying pandemic, suggesting, among other things, that some of history's most vilified pests deserve an apology. Typically considered an outbreak of the bubonic plague, which is transmitted by rats and fleas, the Black Death wreaked havoc on Europe, North Africa and Central Asia in the mid-14th century. It killed an estimated 75 million people, including 30 to 60 percent of Europe's population. According to the traditional narrative, the crisis reached England in the spring of 1348 and began assailing its capital by late summer. Scores of Londoners developed painful swellings that oozed blood and pus before suffering fevers, chills, vomiting and severe aches and pains that often heralded their imminent deaths. The Black Death, a devastating pandemic that struck Europe in the 14th century, was one of the deadliest events in human history. While rats and fleas have long been associated with the transmission of the disease, recent research has shed light on a more complex picture of its causes. Here are some key points to consider when discussing the real causes of the Black Death. Bacterium Yersinia pestis. Yersinia pestis is the bacterium responsible for the Black Death. It's primarily transmitted through fleas that infested rats, but it can also be transmitted through other rodents and even humans. While rats played a role in transmitting fleas to humans, they weren't the sole culprits. Human-to-human -human transmission. The Black Death could also spread directly from person to person through respiratory droplets. Infected individuals could transmit the disease to those in close contact with them, contributing significantly to the rapid spread of the pandemic. Fleas on other animals. Rats were not the only animals hosting infected fleas. Other mammals, such as ground squirrels, played a role in spreading Yersinia pestis. These animals also carried infected fleas that could transmit the disease to humans. Hygiene and sanitation. Poor hygiene and sanitation practices of the time, including overcrowded and unsanitary living conditions in urban areas, contributed to the rapid spread of the disease. Inadequate waste disposal and lack of clean water sources facilitated the transmission of the bacterium. Climate and environmental factors. Some researchers argue that climatic factors, such as changes in temperature and rainfall, may have influenced the distribution and activity of rodent and flea populations, which, in turn, could have affected the outbreak's severity. Genetic variability of Yersinia pestis. Recent genomic studies of Yersinia pestis have revealed multiple strains of the bacterium, suggesting that different strains may have been responsible for various outbreaks of plague. This genetic diversity may explain variations in the disease's transmission and severity. It's essential to acknowledge that the Black Death was a multifaceted event with various contributing factors. While rats and fleas played a role, human behavior, hygiene practices, environmental conditions, and genetic variations of the bacterium also played significant roles in shaping the course and impact of the pandemic. Blaming rats alone oversimplifies the complex nature of the Black Death's causes. Is the Black Death the ancestor of all modern plagues? In the course of his book research, Sloan, who handles research grants for the organization English Heritage, uncovered clues that cast doubt on certain aspects of this account. First, using previously untapped archival sources, he adjusted the timeline of the plague's sojourn in London in 1348 and 1349. The evidence shows the plague appeared in November and reached its height in April, he explained, so it spread right through the cold winter months when rats and fleas should not be so active. If vermin played a significant role and were truly one of the Black Death causes, he theorized, plague cases would have petered out, not snowballed, when temperatures began to fall. A former field archaeologist at the Museum of London, Sloan also found that excavations in the city have turned up little evidence of a massive rat die-off coinciding with the plague. Tens of thousands of people died, he said. If it was rats that spread the disease, they too should have died in the thousands, 
and we would expect to see a significant number of rat bones in waterlogged 14th century contexts. Instead, we see generally low levels of bones, which is suspicious. Finally, wills hastily drafted by panic-stricken Londoners as the Black Death ravaged their communities revealed that the disease proliferated like wildfire. In many affected households, people died within hours or days of signing, and their beneficiaries followed them to the grave in short order. In Sloan's view, this rapid rate of transmission suggests that the plague spread from person to person, not through bites from rat-borne fleas. Therefore, it's unlikely that rats were one of the Black Death causes. The Black Death, caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis, is not the direct ancestor of all modern plagues, but it is closely related to the emergence of bubonic and pneumonic plague strains that continue to exist today. Here's how the Black Death is connected to modern plagues. Yersinia pestis. Yersinia pestis is the bacterium responsible for the Black Death in the 14th century. It has evolved into several distinct subspecies, some of which are responsible for various forms of modern plague. While the Black Death played a pivotal role in shaping our understanding of plague, modern plagues are not direct descendants of the Black Death but rather represent the ongoing evolution and persistence of Yersinia pestis in the natural world. Public health measures and the availability of antibiotics have significantly reduced the impact of modern plague outbreaks, making them less deadly than historical pandemics like the Black Death. Sloan said his findings call into question the theory that bubonic plague, caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis, was responsible for decimating medieval Europe. Other researchers, including James Wood of Penn State University, have expressed similar doubts, pointing out that the pandemic's hallmark symptoms occur in many other diseases that spread quickly among human carriers. In October 2010, a group of European scientists claimed to have settled the debate by using DNA analysis to implicate Yersinia pestis in the outbreak. But their study did not encompass pre-1348 graves, so it is possible that the bacterium was present but not the actual killer, said Sloan. On balance, I am suggesting we need to be more scientific and do more work before claiming we have solved the mystery," he explained. Medieval Black Death was airborne, scientists say. In his book, Sloan challenges other prevailing assumptions about the Black Death in London as well, including its casualty count. London's population was maybe 60,000, Sloan said. I believe firmly that something like 35,000 people died in nine months, up to 60% of the population. This is considerably higher than the 35 to 45 percent normally suggested. He also explores how the aftermath of the plague, which left its ghastly stamp on England and Europe for decades, shaped the social and moral context of the era. It clearly changed how Londoners at least approached death, burial and charity to their fellows, he said. Survivors tended to give more away to good causes in their wills. They included more instructions to be buried close to loved ones and they made more bequests to particular social groups such as lepers, prisoners and hermits. The theory that the medieval Black Death may have been airborne is a topic of ongoing research and debate among scientists and historians. While the traditional understanding has been that the bacterium Yersinia pestis was primarily transmitted through fleas that infested rats and occasionally through direct human-to-human -human contact, some researchers have suggested that airborne transmission may have also played a role. Here's what we know about this theory. Historical accounts. Some historical accounts from the time of the Black Death suggest that the disease could spread rapidly within communities, affecting people who had no direct contact with infected rats or fleas. This has led some researchers to consider alternative transmission routes. Evidence for airborne transmission. Recent research has provided some evidence to support the idea of airborne transmission. One study published in 2018 in the journal, Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, examined the dental pulp of human remains from a Black Death cemetery in London and found DNA fragments of Yersinia pestis. The study suggested that the bacteria might have been aerosolized, potentially through respiratory transmission. Caveats in debate. It's important to note that the airborne transmission theory is not universally accepted among scientists. The evidence for this mode of transmission is still somewhat limited, and there are alternative explanations for how the disease spread rapidly in densely populated urban areas. Multiple modes of transmission. 
The prevailing view among experts is that the Black Death was likely transmitted through a combination of routes, including fleas, rats, and direct human-to-human -human contact. The role of each transmission route may have varied depending on factors such as local conditions and population density. Further research. The question of how the Black Death was transmitted continues to be an area of active research. Advances in scientific techniques, such as ancient DNA analysis, may provide more insights into the mechanisms of transmission during the Black Death. In summary, while there is some evidence and ongoing debate about the possibility of airborne transmission playing a role in the spread of the medieval Black Death, it's essential to recognize that the disease's transmission was likely multifaceted, involving various routes. Further research is needed to fully understand the complexity of how the Black Death spread during the 14th century pandemic. Thanks for watching. Request you to subscribe the channel.